Hey folks, Technivers here. In a couple minutes, I'm going to take you over to one of my messy, messy tables here, and we're going to take a look at some of the tools you need to get into 3D printing. Now, don't worry, most of these tools are going to come included with your first printer, but I have a few here that aren't, and you may want to pick up before you start your journey into 3D printing. So let's check it out right now. The Technivers channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to check us out on Patreon, pop over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-V-O-R-O-U-S. Here, we do our best to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in 3D printing and tech and keep you informed on the latest developments in these sectors. So, if you're interested in getting updates on 3D printing or technology such as programming, robotics, artificial intelligence, and things of that nature, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, leave a like on this video, and comment about what you'd like to see in the future because we make these videos for you. See, just as I said, messy, messy, messy. All right, now let's take a look at some of the tools I've accumulated. As you can see, I've got this giant baggie right here that uh, we might pull a thing or two out of there, but for the most part, I've got this stuff laid out on the table. So let's check it out. Normally, when you receive a 3D printer, you're going to get the following tools. You're going to get a pair of clippers. You're going to get a spatula. You can see I have so many, I haven't even used them all. I don't know why I've pulled out all of these black ones, that, and, and I'm not even sure which company sends those. I will point out, this guy came with the ANET ET5, and it is extremely sharp, but it is probably the best removal tool that I have for removing something from a glass bed. So... That is an amazing spatula. If you can get your hands on one of those, definitely do. Uh, then you have your assorted Allen keys. As you can see, I have multiple sets here. There's more in this bag. I haven't even taken them all out. Um, these accumulate quite quickly because there's normally a full set for every piece that you need in your printer box. So once in a while, you will receive a screwdriver in there as well. If not, I have a screwdriver with a bunch of miniature heads that I use. But uh, these guys, sometimes they're, they're, as you can see, they're kind of cheap. You can see I uh, over torqued that and twisted the corner and broke it right off. Uh, but once in a while, you'll find those in there as well. And a lot of times, you'll find these little guys, these little stamp cut uh, wrenches that are good for the nozzle and usually not much else. Sometimes the, there will be one for the coupler for the Bowden tube as well. Um, and... If you have a glass bed, usually it will have some sort of clips in the box, either this style or the flat metal style that slides right on. And I have one of those right here. Let me pull it off the old ender real quick. And that looks like this. And it just slides right on and clips the glass in place. A little bit lower profile than the butterfly clips. The printer will almost always come with a USB stick adapter. Um, and that adapter is for either the micro SD card or the regular sized SD card that will also come with the printer. Now these are important to hang on to because this is how you transfer files from the computer back to the printer. But this also has all of your slicing software and the test files on it when you receive it from the manufacturer. So when you find this in your box, the first thing you're going to want to do is plug it into your computer, not your printer and copy the files that are there then you can insert it into your printer because the software you're going to need is on here and if you start a test print you're not going to be able to see what else is on this disk until after that test print is done and normally the test print takes a couple hours so i definitely recommend having something else to entertain you other than just staring at the printer that brings us to the last tool that is usually included but i have found not always included and this is a nozzle cleaning wire and basically it's a piece of guitar string that's coiled on one end so you don't prick yourself and very sharp on the other and if you get any clogs what you do is you insert this into the hot nozzle and it'll poke through any clogs so like i said this is usually included but i have received some printers that did not have one of these in there um it's just a cheap piece of guitar string like i said you could get them you can make your own it's not hard to acquire uh, a couple of the other things that don't normally come with your printer that I would definitely recommend. This is a simple glue stick. Um, now I have all sorts of bed surfaces around here from PEI to build tech to glass to uh, this interesting new surface they have on the Ender 3 V2. 
This I use exclusively for my glass surfaces. It gets really good adhesion from pretty much everything. You just need to put down a thin layer of glue stick. So if you're having pr problems with things sticking, that's going to be a good place to start. Don't recommend kneading it on build tack or anything else like that. If it's not sticking to a specifically designed build surface, then you have other issues other than the adhesion itself. So this is just for glass. Um, and I definitely recommend picking up a pair of calipers. As you can see, I'm going to have to get a new pair because I'm missing a knob that goes here. But these are used for measuring things in millimeters, and you can measure the outside of an object, or the inside of an object, or the depth of an object. So it's pretty useful for designing models and checking out your prints when they're done to see if they tested at the right, um, it, if the dimensions are correct, if the accuracy you need from your printer is there. There's one other tool in this big bag back here, that's why I didn't put it away, and that is this guy right here. Now this is actually a socket screwdriver with a really long six millimeter socket stuck into it. This is for removing the nozzle. Now, when you order a big pack of nozzles online, say from Amazon or somewhere like that, you might receive one of these with it, which is where this one came from, but I have actually received them in with my printers as well, except they look more like this. Now, I, I didn't understand what this weird pipe looking wrench was at first, and I've only ever gotten it in one printer, but this is the same thing. This is a nozzle wrench so you it, it's even got a little hole there so you don't like jam the plastic back up in there really clever um, but that's another tool you might want to look into getting but you can take that nozzle off with the simple wrenches they give you right here pretty much just as easily so that's basically it those are the tools you're going to want to get and be aware of you really won't need to acquire any of them other than say the glue stick if you have a glass bed definitely definitely need a pair of these these are amazing and the nozzle changing wrench is a handy addition as well and if you're going to go out and buy more parts before your printer gets here i suggest finding a heavy duty flat blade like this for removing prints from the bed so that's going to be it for this one guys i just wanted to show you these tools and it's kind of a giant pile i've accumulated let's see i've gone through i think 11 printers and this kind of just scratched the surface of what I had laying around on my different benches, not what's tossed in a box the second I opened it, and things like that. The last thing that we need to talk about is obviously filament types. So if you're just getting into 3D printing, I highly recommend that you stay away from ABS. So ABS is one of the most finicky materials to print with. And if you don't have an enclosed system, it can be a real pain in the butt. It's doable, but it also gives off toxic fumes you really don't want to breathe in. Uh, if you're going to do ABS, make sure you're safe around it and you're not standing over it just kind of huffing the fumes. There are plenty of companies that do stuff that's as strong as ABS, but not quite ABS. This is a carbon fiber PLA from 3DX Tech. And as you can see, it comes on a little sample spool if you just want to try some. It's pretty nice stuff. I haven't opened this one yet, but I wanted to use this one as an example because normally on the spool when you're printing, it will give you a temperature that you should print in. So this is the hot end extrusion temperature, 190 to 220. And this is the bed temperature, 23 to 60. So anywhere in there and you should be good to print this. Now this however, is a carbon fiber nylon. The nylon notoriously needs higher temperatures, and this one is a 240 to 270. And you wanna make sure that your hot end can go that high because some stock machines only go up to 250 or 260 and are meant for printing ABS and PETG, but mostly just PLA. So definitely check the extrusion temperature and the bed temperature and make sure that you can accommodate those when purchasing filament before you jump into the whole printing thing. You'll have a lot better time, and I highly recommend using PLA for beginners. This, for example, is the Ender 3 V2 that I was talking about. It has an amazing support community as far as people being there to help you with problems that you may have. In fact, I have a ton of videos on this in calibrating and setting it up and showing you how to get perfect prints every time. I even have a profile for the slicer that you can download. So I definitely can recommend this printer, but if you're thinking about getting one, definitely check out the links below because purchasing through those, they're affiliate links. So it helps the channel out quite a bit. 
Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, leave a like on this video, and drop me a comment down below if you have any questions about other things that you want to know before you start your journey into 3D printing. Well, that's it guys, that's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available, go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers, and so far I am just about to hit 5,000. So, uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.